Trekking to Everest Base Camp has been a long dream of mine. But I've chosen to take on this iconic trip with a little bit of a twist. I am doing this without flights, without guides, and without porters. And for this next stretch, things are getting hard and heavy. And I know I'm gonna need all the luck I can to accomplish this. First day on the actual Everest Base Camp Trail. So if you haven't seen my previous video, basically we walked all the way from Saleri to Pakding um, instead of taking a flight. Um, cost us about four days because we had some issues on the road. Fishing is so bad right now. Muddy and slippery. We're just kind of in the middle of nowhere. It all took us a little bit longer than expected. So now, four days later, we're here on the official trail. And um, it's also the first day that actually the sun is out. And that feels really good. Today, we're gonna aim for a monjo. And Monjo is also where we need to get the permits for the actual trek. Yeah, so today shouldn't be too difficult, I think. It's only about four hours and only 200 meters of elevation gain. It's so funny, you can immediately notice that we're back on the on the actual trail just by the sheer amount of foreigners here uh, there are a lot of other trekkers now although it was getting busier and busier on the trail mules were still the main source of traffic carrying a bunch of supplies for the lodges higher up they're basically porters in animal form oh no we're surrounded Literally donkeys coming at us from every side. We live here now. <laughs> the sun is out. Well. But no. You wanted to be in it. Yeah, what do I say? Tell people who you are. I'm Oscar. Who's Oscar? That's me. Hello. This is Oscar. Hey. He is my boyfriend. I am. Are you? Hello. Where are you? <laughs> and we're doing ever space camp together. Yes. So actually, Oscar and I thought we were cursed for a while because after the first time we spun one of these everything turned to shit like literally that happened like that's when the mud started the rain started everything bad started basically so since then we haven't been really spinning them because we've been scared but then we actually discovered that so you should spin them clockwise with your right hand and we did it wrong and that's how you get good luck on the trail so maybe that's why maybe maybe we should just do it the other way around so i'm gonna give it a try and hopefully hopefully it helps there we go oh no that's not good as soon as I spun the wheel. <laughs> the clouds came back. Either it's the wheel or it's just the fact that mornings are sunny, afternoons are less sunny, but I blame the wheel. Despite all the mule traffic jams, we got some Wanjo much quicker than expected. Okay, I think we arrived in Wanjo. And it's only 11.30. Not bad, three and a half hours. 
we managed to find a good spot to have some lunch. Mm. Okay. Food. Then it was time to get the permit sorted. You need two permits to be able to hike EBC. The National Park Permit and a Municipality Permit. Thank you. Both of them can be obtained in Monjo and will cost 5,000 rupees in total. Okay, so we're through the gate. It is official now. We are on the Everest Base Camp Trail. I think the plan now is to just walk for a little bit, maybe an hour or so. Um, I don't think we're gonna go all the way to Namche Bazaar. I think it's it's a bit too far. Uh, yeah. Hold that thought. Okay, so a little bit of a change of plans. <laughs> um, we wanted to stay in the place that's now behind us. Um, it's 2.30 now. We don't really feel like stopping already. We kind of doubted it for a second because basically the next possible place is Namche Bazaar. Um, but it's still like another four hours and a 600 meter incline. Um, but yeah, we did decide to push on to go to Namche today. So um, it is going to be an extremely long and hard day. But yeah, it's going to feel good. And sometimes it's good to push yourself a little bit, you know? Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Those next few hours weren't easy. Looking back, they were probably the most brutal hours of the entire trek. This was a bad idea. We're um, about 20 minutes in and I'm already regretting our decision. And although in the moment I kind of hated myself for deciding to push on instead of just to stop and rest and tackle it fresh tomorrow, in hindsight, I'm really glad we chose to push through. In the end, it is kind of the reason why I love hiking so much, because it will inevitably put you in uncomfortable situations and give you a chance to lean into the pain and to discover where your own limits lie. Well, that shower of yesterday is already lost again. I'm sweating like crazy. It's really the combination of like elevation, like quick steep elevation gain with a heavy backpack that's just hurting like hell. I knew this trek was going to be hard, especially without a porter. And before starting, I constantly doubted myself, not sure if I could even do it. But I think exactly those insecurities made me want to do it even more. I didn't want to make things easier for myself. Instead, I wanted to confront my own doubts and prove myself wrong to see what I'm capable of. Tell us, Oscar. Yes. No pain. No chow mein. No egg. No pancake. No highs. No fries. Okay, I think it's uh, it's time to pull out the big guns. Music. It's gonna. Uh, get me through the, the final stretch. You ready? I'm ready? Let's do this. I think it's in a moment of struggle that we truly learn about ourselves, our strengths, our weaknesses, and our capacity for growth. I'm pretty sure we're entering Namche Bazaar right now. We actually made it. Okay, I think it's time for us to uh, find a place to sleep for tonight. I think the Nirvana was a little Okay, we found a place and it's actually quite nice. We have an amazing view over the over the whole town and electricity, Wi-Fi, so what else could you want? <sighs> yeah, this is good. And I'm just happy we're here. And it's like five o'clock, it's not even that late. We I did think, good. I think we did pretty good. Yeah. <sighs> Food. Round one. The best thing about Dalbat is that it's unlimited, so you get like refills. Basically, you pay for one portion and you get double. Round two. 
And while I was exhausted at the end of the day, I also felt a sense of accomplishment. I knew I was stronger than I was yesterday, leaving the flora with the limiting beliefs about herself a bit further behind again in the past. Good morning. So we are currently in Namchi Bazaar and today is our acclimatization day which basically just means we get to rest and do nothing for the entire day. Today's plan is to drink a lot of chai, to eat a lot of food, to not move. <laughs> also we need to organize a little bit for tomorrow. Uh, we need to do some planning and some research on the route we're taking because we don't have a guide. So yeah, that means we have to plan and organize everything ourselves. So literally the only reason that I'm gonna walk for today is to get food. <laughs> I mean, we're hikers, right? As long as it's mm -hmm. comfortable. <laughs> I love life. Did someone say pizza? Actual pizza. So this morning we started taking um, Diamox, which is like a altitude sickness prevention medicine, which they kind of recommend you to take uh, when you get above 3000 meters. One of the side effects though is that you have to pee all the time. And I have to pee right now. I'll be right back. Hey, guess what? What? I have to pee again. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do that all night long. Yes. You know what time it is? What? I think it's pee time. Probably gonna have to do that another 50 times tonight. Okay, it's a new day. We're leaving uh, Namche behind and we are going to Tengboch. It should be a uh, a day with a lot of incline, about 800 meters, and some decline too. And I can tell you, I'm already feeling the altitude. Like we're literally like five minutes in, and I just feel like I can't really breathe. So I think we're gonna cross over this little mountain and then after that it's a lot of decline again and then after that it's a lot of incline again. We are uh, definitely entering mountain territory. There are just too many good views. Look at that. Okay, a little bit more of a push uphill. And then after that, it's time for the decline. I can't wait. The owner of our hotel he told us that it would take about four hours 
and that it was fairly flat. Quote, uh, well, I don't think this is fairly flat. Yeah, I think basically every hotel owner always told us that it's like three hours, four hours, and then we take like double the amount of time. I told myself I could buy one, one souvenir as kind of a, a reminder of this trek. And since I love this village so much, I think I'm gonna buy it here. Yeah, bikey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Umane Padme. Oh, Umane Padme. Yeah. That's like the... the Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. So that's the, the mantra. mantra. Do you say mantra? mantra. Yes. I love it. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> It's really, really a beautiful part of the of the trail today. I'm loving it. Favorite time of the day. Time for lunch. We found a pretty good spot. After lunch, we had one final push up to do, going from 3,240 meters to about 3,975 meters. Okay, so we are currently at 3600 meters, which means we still have about 250 to go. So we're over half. It's going okay. It's not too bad. Okay, people, I think I think we're here. I think we're in Tengbosh. 235. Not bad at all. We settled into our accommodation for the day and then ventured out to give those good luck wheels one more try, as I had a feeling I would need it for the next couple days. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, let's do this. So something uh, I'm definitely starting to notice is that it is getting a lot busier on the trail. I mean, of course I knew that going into this trek, like it is literally one of the most popular treks in Nepal, if not the world. But again, like it's, it's of course for me, it's not a reason to not do this trek because obviously it's popular for a reason and it's busy for a reason. I think it is something you should be mentally prepared for um, because it does influence the experience, I would say. More importantly, for every hiker, there was a porter carrying their bags, basically doubling the traffic on the trail. Borders truly are the heroes of the trekking world. They carry these insanely large and heavy bags on their heads that on average weigh 20 to 30 kilos. Without them, trekking in these regions wouldn't even be possible. They not only make it easier for hikers to reach EBC, but they also ensure that supplies reach remote villages and lodges. And as I was carrying my own heavy backpack along the trail, feeling every ounce of its weight, the sight of porters effortlessly carrying their massive loads put things in perspective and humbled me. I mean, there I was, struggling with my bag while these guys carry 10 times my load and basically do that every day of their lives. It was a reminder not to complain about my own load. Seeing them do it, I couldn't help but feel inspired to keep pushing, appreciating the freedom of trekking on our own while recognizing the incredible role these sporters play in making it all possible. So, uh... Today is day nine, which also means it's uh, day nine of wearing the same disgusting clothes. I guess it's just part of uh, part of the trekking life, you know. You're just disgusting all the time, like like everyone else.
So uh, we are almost at 4,000 meters, which means we're gonna cross the tree line soon. And you can really notice the landscapes are getting a lot more barren, and especially in combination with the mist, it's, it's pretty cool. I love it. I think over there in the distance, that must be Dingboche. Oh, I love that feeling when you know you're almost there and you get like that final energy spurt. You know that food is waiting and masala tea is waiting and you almost get to relax. We made it! Dingboche! So we are currently here in Dingboche at 4410 meters altitude and we walked all the way from Tengboche which is right here. So this took us about 6-7 hours and then after one day of acclimatizing here we're gonna walk all the way up to Lobuche which is right there. And that's basically the final place before we're gonna move all the way up here to our space camp. And so basically from here on, it's only gonna be up, 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 up. And I think it's gonna be a struggle. They're fighting. Fight. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> oh, they're not fighting. Little, little fighting break. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, uh, obviously, we had to get some new Snickers because we ate ours, like, basically one of the first days. The ones that we were supposed to keep for the top of Everest Base Camp. That's so good. Mm. We should have bought more Snickers. I want a bag of them right now. Mm. But now we got new ones. <laughs> <laughs>